sister here. Uh, they had met with my grandmother's family. They ran through the last of their money, and the University of Kentucky was no longer on the card. Uh, for Dark Dean, uh, secretary, secretarial school was a step away from her own complicated youth. Together, they shared a room in a boarding house on Russellville Road. <laughs> to a brother county boy named Hack. Hack was kind and wiry with the farmer's son and an enthusiastic director. Nobody in Enesco County didn't have somebody in the war. Seven months previous, my grandfather was stationed in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, carrying a demolition and getting ready for Eisenhower's big prison. He didn't know exactly who they were going, but he knew it had to be close. He knew it had to be close because the food was getting better. My grandmother dolled himself up in a new red dress in Cincinnati and hot dog train to meet him. He got himself a weekend pass, we spent it in a hotel off base, and two weeks later, my grandfather was on a troop ship bound for England. My grandmother was trying to keep lucky, and on the train, she was afraid of the train, and all right away. And so, my grandmother and her team were anxious, of course they were anxious, but mostly they were bored. They played cards, they drank coffee. They listened to Cooper McGee and Molly on my great-grandfather's massive old RC, RCA radio. Uh, they did their best to follow an event overseas, making what they could to send their letters and have their the maps on the Washington paper. Strange and unpronounceable names. Royal Canal, Kazarine. And people were dying all the time, dying in ridiculous ways. Jeeps turned over on their drivers. Gunners shot the tails off of planes flying beside them. Sailors were washed overboard by freak waves and otherwise glassy seas. Dying was as easy as falling out of bed. 2,000 men killed in the invasion of Sicily. 2,000 telegrams sent out to 2,000 houses. It was like a lottery nobody wanted to win. It didn't bear thinking about. And so my grandmother and Doris Jean would go watch Meet Me in St. Louis down at the Rialto once a week until they finally changed the film. And they played a lot of cards. My great-grandfather was a big man, like something carved out of the side of a hill. And he was the night general dispatcher for the Louisville and Nashville Railroad his entire working life. He was in charge of the rail yards in Ravenna. And that meant he was in charge of the telegraph office. Um, he must have been surprised to find himself surrounded by these two pregnant girls all of a sudden this late in his life. That must have been unexpected when up until then all of his days were populated almost entirely by men. It's a hell of a thing. My great-grandfather stood in the kitchen with his phone to his ear listening to the man in the Lexington office as that man stumbled over his words. It's, it's a hell of a thing. There was a, a telegraph uh, in the office of Lexington. It just came over the wires from Graves Registration, came over from Washington. The man in the office, the man now on the other end of the phone line, saw it and he knew the address. He recognized the name. He had actually worked with my great-grandfather in the past, and so he did the right thing. He picked up the phone. It was a hell of a thing. He was driving up himself, of course, but there was nobody in the Lexington office, and he wouldn't leave it empty. My great-grandfather wanted to wait. There was somebody who could drive first thing in the morning. He wanted to wait for He didn't read it, the man reassured him. He didn't know that. Thank you.
Don't you want to know? Billy boy, Billy boy, will you go to the war, children, Billy? It's a long ways away, they are dying every day. He's a young boy and he cannot leave his mother. Can you use a bayonet, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can you use a bayonet, charming Billy? No, I haven't got the skill to murder and to kill. He's a young boy and he cannot leave his mother. Don't you want a silver medal? You want a silver medal, charming Billy? No desire do I feel to defend the public steel. He's a young boy and he cannot leave his mother.
שילפנו?
My father and I pull out of the driveway and on to Pasadena Drive. It's still cold, but the wind has died down. And the last I see of my grandparents, the last uh, that I'll see them together, uh, they're standing uh, behind the glass panel of the front door and they're waving. Uh, we wave back, we pull out into the road, and in a couple of minutes we're gone. The plane to Los Angeles, my father's plane, leaves in two hours, and the plane to New York leaves even earlier, and so we're going pretty fast uh, out onto the highway. It's cold and it's dark uh, already. And we're following the tail lights of the car that's traveling in front of us through the snow. And the heater's on, the radio's on, the, the weathermen are still in you know, an orgy of, of enjoyment. My father turns to me and, and he says, You know what? But then he doesn't say anything else. The wind is picking up again, and it's already getting pretty dark. It's getting harder just to make out the taillights, the red taillights in the car ahead. The heat is kicked in, the weather men are piling on and on with the snow. The car ahead of us uh, picks up a little speed, and soon the taillights are gone.